Hey everybody, welcome. It's time for another episode. Welcome to the Ultimate World Music Reaction Channel. My name is Rosalie, singer-songwriter, Masters in Counseling Psychology, and this channel is all about music from around this beautiful planet Earth. Music and psychology, that's what we do here. We're gonna check out another Nightwish song today. I'm gonna keep it short and sweet. I've been diving into Nightwish. Thanks to you guys, I'm on this journey. I explored their song, Ghost Love Score. Then I checked out their song, Storytime. I'm following the list from Gabriel Bardak. So now it is time for Romanticide. What I can tell based on the feedback that he's given me and you guys, it sounds like the different songs that they provide, the different songs they play, all have a different touch, right? Sometimes it's more upbeat, sometimes it's more metal, sometimes it's more intense. Either way, Nightwish is a symphonic metal band. I'm learning that where I used to think metal is all about just screaming and you can't understand a word. There's so many subgenres in metal and you guys have been super helpful in the comments. I asked in my last video what the bulls represented because due to personal upbringing and um, different things that I've heard or picked up on or certain stereotypes, I often treat that with caution, don't know what it's about. Funny story, so supposedly they use the bull not for Nightwish but for the Wacken Festival, which is what this song, the, the song I'm about to review, is also from the Wacken 2013 concert, but it's a town in Germany, which silly me, I was born and raised in Germany, I'm half Cuban, half German, but I, I was never into metal, so I did not know these things. Um, the town Wacken in Germany is all about, you know, they have plenty of cows out there on the fields and bulls, and so that became the symbol for the festival. Of course, the bull in and of itself, and using the bull is ancient and um, is used in all kinds of different cultures and religions, right, where it means different things to different people. But when it comes to metal and the rock world, from my understanding, it's with Wacken, with that festival particularly, related to where it's taking place in Wacken in Germany. But then also um, it came from, um, from a musician named Ronnie James Dio, whose, I think, grandmother was, who would make the symbol or do the symbol all over him to protect him from evil spirits. Um, some of you guys have said has originated from uh, an area in Sicily where it was used to protect against the evil eye or against evil spirits. And Ronnie James Dio's grandma did that to him to protect him. And then that became his thing um, at his concerts. So thank you for your comments. Thank you for educating me, for being open-minded, for allowing me to explore and ask questions. I want to check out another of their songs. Today we're going to check out Romanticide. I don't know what it's about. I don't know what's going to happen. I believe that it's more along the metal side of things. I think Gabriel mentioned that. So I'm curious to see what happens because I am not really a metal fan in the sense of, ah, right? I've been really enjoying Nightwish because it's much more symphonic metal. Lots of melodies, and Florianson's voice is are Florianson's voice is like amazing. So I'm enjoying the ride. I'm enjoying enjo uh, checking out Nightwish. All right, are you guys ready? I am. I'm curious to see what happens here. I hope I'm ready. <laughs> okay, here we go. My heart rate just kind of went up by 50 beats per minute, <laughs> whatever the measurements would be. What? Okay, yeah, this is definitely more metal, but I'm enjoying that she's singing, that it's not just wah, right, nonstop, because I, like I've said that before, it's not my thing. But this is definitely, from the musical arrangement standpoint, way more on the metal side. Like, this is hard. But hey... It's, it's cool. It's fun. I, I'm, I'm loving the windmilling thing, man. I have, I have a blast doing that myself. All right, <laughs> let's see.
those harmonies are dope. exhausted and I wasn't even on stage. Okay, maybe for those of you who were like, stop the video and talk and comment, I'm sorry. I didn't want to miss anything and it, it was so intense that I wanted to see what else happens. I don't even know where to start, you guys. First of all, I love how Flor Janssen is just this powerhouse. Vocally, obviously, but even the way she's built, like just... Oh, it's so cool. I respect that. Then um, with her, I feel like it's always this vocal treat because it's I mean, she started strong, right? Again, came in with those operatic notes and just the way she hits it so in sync. I love that. I've seen that in a couple of the other songs and I enjoy that a lot. But because she has such a powerful voice, it's always this treat to see where is she going to go with it? Where is she going to take this? Then when it comes to the uh, actual song, like I've said before, I know I keep saying it, I am not really into metal. I like some good rock and I like some rock that goes pretty hard, okay? But metal has never been my thing. And so, um, again, I always had the stereotype, metal means screaming. And if you're not into a genre, right, or you don't know much about a certain music, you don't know a lot of these things. And so I'm learning things to you guys, how there's all these subgenres, and I've discovered that I really enjoy symphonic metal because, again, I'm all about the melodic, I'm all about the orchestral elements, I love the fact that they have all these different elements where they do have the, the drums and they do have the electric guitar, but then they also bring in the um the wood the woodwinds um the wood the woodwind the woodwinds and the stringed instruments and the orchestra and it's just powerful. But I definitely understand what Gabriel meant by this is more of, of a metal track. And I've got to say, okay, when I, when I first saw it in the description, I was like, ah, I don't know. And then they first started and I'm like, okay, I can, I can see what they mean. I can see that this is becoming, that this is more, an, an, more metal than it is, you know, that uplifting vibe that, for example, Storytime had. 
But the more I'm, I was watching, I'm like, I like this. And the crazy thing is, and one of you guys said that so well, because of stereotypes, it's so easy to think, okay, as soon as it's like rock or you see people wearing a lot of black and got the black eye makeup, it's so easy because of stereotypes to go, oh, this must be evil or darker or whatever. And sure, like you've said yourself, several of you have pointed out, sure, there's a very small group within the metal community that may actually genuinely be um, into evil stuff or not just do it for show, but genuinely, you know, seeking those things out. Um, then there's also a whole community and various sub genres within metal that are not at all about that. And a lot of times, one of you said that so well, even though there's stereotypes that would say, oh, metal and rock, they must be, you know, about evil stuff or whatever. You look at the lyrics and it's much more poetic and it's much more art when it comes to songwriting compared to some of the hip hop and pop out there. Don't get me wrong. There's some pop, rap, um, hip hop artists and music that I really enjoy and plenty of them out there that have great messages. But then there's also a lot, especially in the mainstream me um, media and in the mainstream music that is full of crap where there's much more wickedness, evilness in hip hop and pop and some of the things that are preached and some of the messages that are in the lyrics um, or the music videos that are just so foul. And then I see this and how they're having a good time and I'm loving the windmill. I'm learning be uh, from you guys that she's able to do it without hurting her neck by having a stance where she puts her arms on her, um, her hands on her thighs and um, supports herself that way. So look at me, I'm learning. <laughs> One of these days I'm gonna have to do a, a video uh, practicing a proper windmill. Um, you might have to, you might have to stay tuned for that. Maybe I'll do that over on, on, on Patreon, a little special treat, <laughs> Rosalie learning to windmill properly. But, um, it's just really cool to see how they're having a good time. Vocally, just awesome what she does. And then the way that it just gets more and more hype. And what I dig about their tracks is that it's really like this... Ah, it's like a movie in a way, in the sense that there's a storyline, right? It's not just a song and it's so straightforward, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus, done. But it's, it's, they take it to this whole level where there's either an interlude, like I noticed in Love's, um, Ghost Love Score, or where they switch things up and now it sounds almost like a different song, um, even though it's still the same song, but just it, probably the bridge in a lot of cases, but it's so distinct that it really sounds like something else is happening. We're diving into a completely different level here. Um, be it an interlude, be it the bridge, but it's so different. It still fits perfectly. It's not out of place, but it's unique and it just takes everything to another level where it's like, oh my gosh, right? And now they're bringing in the fire and it's all in sync and it's just a lot of fun. I totally understand more and more how a lot of people enjoy um, this type of music because it just gives you this freedom just to, you know, let it out and just to let all that energy out. Some people have explained to me sometimes metal or rock, you know, would allow people to tap into also the hard things and the dark things, uh, dark sides of things. Um, because, you know, light and dark is part of the human experience, right? It's not just joy and happiness and hoppity poppity. It's <laughs> hoppity poppity. I should make a new music genre called it hoppity poppity. <laughs> Um, but you know, life is not just all hoppity poppity. It's also suffering and struggle and dark things and hard topics. Um, so I get why there's a draw to that. I'm enjoying it. You know, that, this channel is all about world music. I love all kinds of genres. I can't be boxed in when it comes to what's my favorite type because you'll hear me jamming out to rock, now metal. I'll be enjoying Arabic music, music from Russia, some hip hop, some dubstep, some rap, some melodic symphonies, classical music. The lyrics are God love and rest my soul with this sundown never ending. The feel is gone, yet you ain't gonna see me fail. I'm the decadence of your world. I'm an aider covered in oil. Happy hunting, you double-faced carnivore. Snap. Tell me why, no heart to cry, hang me high. The music is dead, the amen is said. The kiss of faith is what I beg. A loving heart and soul for sale. Mm. Tell me why, leave me be and cease to tell me how to feel. To grieve, to shield myself from evil. Leave me be, o ode of lies is killing me, romanticized, to love do me part. Very poetic, like it gives me that Shakespeare vibe, right? It gives me that feeling of Romeo and Juliet, um, love and death. Um, really where something is being painted, where where the songwriter, the lyricist, the the um, singer is not shying away from dealing with that pain and the hardships. Whenever we hear words that have the suffix side in it, it indicates some type of killing, right? You have genocide, 
killing of, of many people, suicide. Um, you have bacteria side, right? Something that can kill the bacteria, romanticide. So the idea here that I'm gathering, let me know in the comments below, is that this love, this romance led to death. It was a killer. Um, and I think the lyrics kind of go along with that. Leaving me be, cease to tell me how to feel, to grieve, to shield myself from evil. Leave me be, owed of lies is killing me, see? So, and again, it's very Shakespearean, very, very poetic. And I like that these lyrics tap into some of that. I noticed that in story time too, where some of you guys gave some interesting interpretations of how that can be, um, gave some cool comments on how that can be interpreted and also educated me on some of the original stories um, of where some of these things come from that were then, you know, translated into Disney movies, but obviously older tales, older stories. And I really enjoy that about um, Tuomas's songwriting, which from what I understand, he writes most of the song. There's a lot of poetry, a lot of art. Um, there's room to interpret it in different ways. Uh, it's not just so straightforward and this means this and this is my experience and your experience. It's just very poetic, very artistic. Um, and I think one of you even pointed out, or maybe a few of you, how metal is seen as the sister to classical music, which, you know, it, it sounds abstract because it's so it sounds different, right? We think classical music and then we think metal. Um, but I do see parallels, especially when we see something like symphonic metal, where you have those orchestral elements. So really, really interesting. I enjoy this. I'm really enjoying exploring Nightwish and Flo Janssen. Check out my reactions to her song, her single that she put out recently, Me Without You, and my other reactions to the Nightwish songs. To the night with songs. I'm enjoying this journey, you guys. What do you think? What does this song mean to you? How do you interpret the lyrics? Let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this ride. As always, like, share, subscribe, check out Patreon. Uh, Rosalie reacts, lots of goodies there, and lots more content coming. If you enjoy music and psychology, make sure to subscribe. Let leave a comment below and join Patreon because we're all about music and psychology over there, and lots of special things coming. I appreciate you guys. This was Rosalie reacts. Until next time, hey -o.